はじめまして私は資料術師グスタス生きし者たちよ我が呼びかけに応えるとはの眠りにつくのです魔力が体の奥からどんどんと湧き出してきます人の声をさよミシェルと言います私のお城へきっとお守りしますから攻撃に転じるのは今です。より濃い私はフロレンティア・ユース・ティーツエリュシオン計画の総指揮官だ。懐かしい名前だそう呼ばれなくなって久しいついえる土へ帰る書き消えろ煙のようにHey everyone, we're back. And I said we because I am here with Frontier again. I am not dead. Yeah, we, ha we haven't recorded together for a while because, you know,、uh, we've been busy and then, like, there's some other stuff happened. But、uh, so, how have you been doing, Frontier? I've been doing fine. All right, that's great.、Uh, been playing some Pokemon Legends Arceus, I assume? Yes. Yeah, I've only played one hour so far, but, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing more. But、uh, until then, like,、uh, I guess today we're going to talk about two patches at once because we are behind. We are really behind and we really got to、yeah, yeah. talk about a lot of stuff. So, we're going to combine our discussion of、uh, Gustav Michel patch plus the Iron Chancellor and Console of the Moon patch. And in fact, Liza is going to be in here as well. When the part three story started,、uh, people already knew that Liza was going to be in the game, right? Because you, start, you can actually get, her, get shards for her already. Right now. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, like, because the part three story started. You can get shards for her already. You just can't get. Ah. You don't, you don't get enough to actually summon her yet. So,、oh, okay, that makes sense.、Yeah. So, it's with this patch, uh what is it, Gustav and Michelle. They open up more main story chapters, and then you get more Liza shards, and they can、uh, summon her. Actually, uh there, it's actually really funny because, like, right now, if you go to, like, the summon uh the summon page, and you go to the hero gallery uh in the global version, uh Lisa actually is in there already, but it's, like, it's bugged. I guess like they didn't realize that, but it has like Wetham's description in there. I guess when they combined the 3.0 patch with the, with the SB Lana patch, they just, they just forgot to like fix everything. Oh no. A lot to talk about today. So these two patches are,、uh, what is it? It came out in November and December of 2021. So it's, it, was,、huh. it, was, it was a whole year ago, technically. Oh dang. We were really late. <laughs>、uh, so for us, it's going to be coming on, I believe, March and April. That's the projection anyway. So、uh, let's just get started.、Uh, I guess we can start by talking about the new SR freebie from the Act t h r e e story, who is Lisa.、Uh, I mean, I, I put Liza because that's actually. So, so in the、uh, Chinese version, her, her name is romanized as Liza. But、uh, okay. I think in the global version, they're going to call her Lisa. So, whatever. It's, it's whatever. Liza, Lisa. Call her whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. So. In my opinion, she's probably the most interesting SR freebie like in, from the story that we've ever gotten because she has a very unique skill set. And I think、uh, they're almost like kind of experimenting around again.、Uh, maybe we'll see another character in the future that's an SSR that probably takes the same concept and maybe does something similar, except good. 
Uh, oh, okay. I mean, again, not to say Lisa is bad, but like Lisa, so she's she's uh, she's kind of designed like a druid archetype from other RPGs. Her talent is uh, she needs certain terrain to get an attack bonus and she restores HP. That's kind of a limitation right off the bat, but you know it's not so bad because forest grasslands pretty common, and then desert gives her a bit of flexibility. Obviously, the big gap here is uh, indoors maps, right? Like she can't yeah. do she can't do well on like any sort of indoors or like like the sky castle maps and stuff like that. That's gonna give her a hard time. Uh, but aside from that, the most unique part about her is the other part of this talent, which is where when she ends her turn, she gets to like choose a form. So she's like a druid. She gets to choose a bear form, a wolf form, or a hare form. Uh, so all three of these have very different functions. So the the simple way of putting it is that the bear form is kind of like a tanky form. Uh, she gets more defense. She heals more, uh, and she can actually fight in melee as well. She's a she's an archer plus assassin, by the way. Uh, you know, that was that was something okay. that that was something that surprised people because people knew what she looked like and everybody saw that she was using like a staff so yeah she's got a staff i was thinking she's gonna be like a mage everyone actually a lot of people thought she was gonna be a lancer kind of like estelle because oh. like people thought she was maybe like she was gonna club people with a staff or something but uh <laughs> she ended up being an assassin slash uh, archer character but i guess oh. like they, they built the melee penalty negation into the bear form so if you want to like you don't have to use extreme magic bow on her you can just use bear form if you really want to uh so but I, the more like dps oriented form is actually the wolf form this one gives her move plus one and crit rate so this is basically like her assassin form basically or her dps form yeah. and uh probably most interestingly she, her hair form is a healer form to me the most interesting part about this and i've mentioned this in like in, in i made a video about srs and in there i mentioned the fact that she can heal is the most interesting part of her because she is in the meteor strike faction and meteor strike up until this point has not had a single healer like if you go back and look there is not a single healer in the major strike faction uh i mean there are sort of healers uh juggler can heal everybody yeah. if he gets hit uh zerida can heal everybody with her faction buff yeah uh, uh a lot of the meteor strike characters have like first aid or they can heal themselves in some way mm -hmm. but they never had a character that can just like straight up heal uh but lisa can do that lisa gets the mariel like physical based heal salvation uh which is a very strong heal you know it's uh you know it's an attack based heal uh no cooldown and dispel duty buff so it is a good solid heal uh and uh her her 3c if she's in hair form will also be like a mass heal basically so you know she's not like some op healer or anything it's very basic healing skills but that's a nice addition if you struggle with the meter strike challenges and we're in battleground and stuff still it's, it's gonna be really nice to get lisa yeah, she's actually a healer. Okay. Yeah, because cool. e well, even in the long term, like even if some way down the line they add a meter strike healer in that's SSR, Lisa's a nice addition because she's free, right? Yeah. Uh, as far as as a DPS, I think she's interesting. Like you know, it's kind of fun to have all these weird transforming abilities, but uh, when you really sit down and look at her attacking or offensive skill set, it's not that impressive. Uh, she has plus one move from her wolf form. She has uh, a 1C skill that's unique to her that is kind of like Cold Blood. But basically what it does is that it lets her use all three forms at once, basically. Uh, okay. So she goes into like a super form. Uh, it lasts two turns, but then after she uses it, she can move two blocks. So it's Cold Blood, except like, you know, instead of Crypt Break Plus, she gets all three forms at once. Uh, so basically, like, you can think of it like this. If she's already in her wolf form... Which would have taken an ex a turn already, which is kind of a problem in PvP, but like, let's assume like you're in that form. You have four move, you can move two, and then she can have two range. So she has an eight range, eight threat range, uh, eight block threat range, which these days is like, it's okay. Like it's not, it, it's not, it's not the worst. Like there's, there's like, there's worse characters and eight threat range is okay, okay especially for like a freebie like this, but uh, definitely not keeping up with the strong characters and really, really large range we're seeing nowadays. Yeah. So I don't think she's going to be that good in PvP. Uh, I think she's at least usable. Like I will think I will say like she's more usable than like Oliver and Melania are anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Although like you know is that I don't think that's really a favorable comparison. Mm -hmm. uh, she doesn't have an exclusive yet, of course. And I guess some people might look at her kit and say like, well, if she got a really good exclusive, maybe she'll be really good. And sure, maybe. But I kind of thought the same thing about, like, Melania. Uh, when Melania came out, I thought, like, okay, this is a very unique skill set. 
and she didn't have a 3C, she didn't have an exclusive. And I was like, once she gets those two things, maybe she'll be like really good in PvP, or like at least more viable. But you know, over time, her stuff came out and I was just like, eh, she's kind of floating around the same place because like they gave her some stuff that was kind of useful, but not that good. Uh, so I, I feel like the same thing's gonna happen to Lisa, like whenever she gets her unique. Uh, I might be wrong, you know, they might show more, more favoritism. Uh, yeah. Because uh, Lisa ha already has two reasons to be popular among the fan base. So like one thing people might bring up is that, oh, she's like a story SR, so she's already useless because you need to wait until the story comes out to, to shard her up. And that is not true. She has a gate of fate and she is going to be released. Oh, no. She's going to be released with the Gate of Fate, and if you were really so inclined, you can shard her up. So this is like, uh, I guess they finally learned that having these character freebies come out and then needing to wait like a whole year before they are short, before you can get them to six stars is like kind of stupid design. Yeah, it kills <laughs> uh, the character off. Yeah, I mean most people aren't going to shard her anyway because eventually, I'm going to assume eventually we're going to be able to six star her for free. But yeah. <laughs> But you know, if you if you really like her design or whatever, and you really want to play with her, then yeah, you, know, you can you, you can get a fader. And I mean, uh, at, the very, at the very end, there's just free crystals, so. Yeah, yeah. If you do our fader, you'll get some crystal. As far as her bonds go, like Mariandel and Matthew. Uh, obviously, Matthew is not a problem, but like Mariandel, eh, like a lot. Of, I think a lot of people skip Mariandel. Like if you assuming you got Warner first. I mean, a lot of people kept pulling, and then it kept getting a bunch of Mariandels. Yeah. <laughs> and instead of Warner. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, that is that's, that was also a problem with Oliver and uh, Melania, right? Because one of them needed Knight of Mystery, and one of them needed uh, Elusia to unlock their bonds. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that was that was kind of a very annoying part for some people. It's just like, you know, you get these freebie characters that might be fun to play with, but then they use characters that I might not have been particularly interested in. <laughs> Same problem here. Uh, you know, you might not, maybe you want to play around with Lisa and you didn't want to, you didn't want to go and pull for Mariandel. Uh, at least that's the defense bond, which isn't as important for her. At least they made it so that her attack bond is Matthew, right? Because like that's more important yeah. for her. She's a she is like more attack focused. She has a DPS. Her heal and her base off attack. Uh, it sucks that I get the defense bond, but I guess it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's all about all I have. I can think of. Morando eventually does have a um a guaranteed gift aid. Not, not not a gift aid banner. Oh yes yes uh, I believe uh, on. The... During the Valkyria Chronicles month, there is going to be a Destiny banner with Mariandel uh, that also has Lambda and Angelina. Uh, I think a lot of longtime players will have Lambda and Angelina, so yes, if you want to pick up Mariandel there, that would be a choice. Mm -hmm. There you go, that's your, <laughs> your defense buff right there, guys. Oh yeah, I guess like, I, I sort of touched on this briefly, but I just just to uh, just to talk about it again, her, her factions are actually really good. So Because Meteor and Legend, it's actually a really good uh, faction combination because obviously legend has uh landius as usual like landius gets bumped out a lot of boxes because of hilda and christian but like landius still maintains a pretty high rank in tier list because there's so many good legend characters that can get bumped by landius warner yeah you know like even epsilon is, is legend and you know like if you if you play a lot of legend characters then you know uh, Lisa will feel right at home. Epsilon is popular right now, so a meter strike buff, not a problem. Uh, protagonist, like, Protagonist isn't that great, but it's still nice, especially because Emperor Lavinar came out, so, like, there's, you know, some boxes will still have him. Okay. So, you know, Lisa actually has, like, really good factions, and she can sort of function okay in PvP, and that's why, like, I think some tier list for her in a usable rank, basically, like, where, where it's like, yeah, she's not great, but, you know, she kind of has enough things going for her where she's where she functions okay in PvP. Yeah, that's nice. So, and, and to be fair, like, to be fair to Oliver and Melania, or, like, just Oliver, rather, when Oliver yeah. first when Oliver first came out, a couple of people did use Oliver, and he was pretty good. He, he did have an interesting niche of his own. His popularity faded with time. Uh, Melania never enjoyed that popularity, okay? <laughs> Melania was, like, <laughs> Melania has always been kind of like, eh. Um, Bad. Yeah, but we'll, we'll see. Like, I will say, like, Lisa, she's at least a very fun character to play because she's so unique. And that's all I gotta say. Any, anything you wanna add here? Um, I like her design. Her <laughs> her sing, uh, her kit looks nice. I mean, I'm probably just gonna use her for the healer for, for Meteor action, though. I mean, I'm definitely going to build her, uh, because yeah. uh, not only is she an SR, but she's also a protagonist, so I guess it's obligatory for me. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I consider being useful for your, um, your free SR character clears. Oh yeah, definitely. Like I said, if I ever have to do Meteor Strike challenges, Lisa will be really, really nice to have. 
Okay. And even like uh, my typical clears, like if I if I'm bringing like a protagonist team, because usually in if I restrict myself to SRs, uh, protagonists are like Matthew, Almeida, uh, Chris. And, uh, like, Parn is, like, borderline, because, like, Parn is a collab character, so I, I try not to use him if I don't have to. Yeah. Uh, Lisa will be a good addition to that. Like, you know, it's just another healer and DPS if I need it. Although, like I said, like, a lot of those challenges occur on, like, stone tiles and stuff. Uh, or, like, y y you know, oh, yeah. like, like, stone tiles yeah. and stuff, which will actually be a big problem for Lisa. So, because she needs the, she needs the terrain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so... Okay, now we're moving into Michelle and Gustav, and before we talk about their gameplay function, uh, okay, so like the night these they were starting to reveal these characters, I was just sitting at my computer and doing some other stuff, and somebody DM'd me, it's like, hey, check it out, like, did, like new characters are coming out, and uh, somebody sent me a picture of Michelle, and I was like, oh, that's kind of weird, because she doesn't really look like Michelle. Her, she has her, armor, doesn't she, in the actual game? Uh, well, her getup is, she does wear, ar I mean, she wears armoring here, too. The general character, initial impression, I mean, the character is very different from what you see in the original art. Because in the original art, the idea is that she's kind of like this very shy girl who hides herself in her armor. Oh, I remember saying that, yes. Yeah, yeah so like, well, I didn't really like what they did with the redesign, which is like... They basically made her more, made, made her more stripperific, right? So, which... Yeah. Uh, I mean, and, you know, like, it's language surge. There's going to be some cheesecake, and I'm okay with that. But it's just like, I don't like it when you do it to, to the extent that you are kind of affecting... What the character feels like you know what i mean yeah and uh i guess like another nitpick is that if you look at her armor in the mobile version it has like these weird robot arms right yeah and, so and, like, what does those well well the thing is is that in tensei tensei kind of had like this weird steampunk kind of uh setting but mm -hmm. the thing and, and you know oh, okay. i i thought of that at first but then i realized then i thought about it a bit more and i was like wait no michelle is in the army of light those were the guys who weren't using the technology because the technology guys were the Empire in, in Tensei. Like the Dresden Empire, like uh, Wer like Werner, right? Werner has the motorcycle. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and uh, there's actually like helicopter knights <laughs> in Tensei. But my point is that the Empire was the one that was using the technology, right? And so it was, so it's just one of those things where it's like, hmm, did, did they actually play Tensei? Like, <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Anyway, that's just me like nitpicking. I was being nitpicky, but I was like, okay, whatever. They, they redesigned her. And then, like, five minutes later, uh, somebody messaged me again. It's like, hey, check out, it's Gustav. And I, and I saw the picture of Gustav, and I was like, is this a joke? Because, like, because Gustav... I mean... <laughs> well, okay, so everyone knows, like, Gustav is a guy in, in original Tensei, right? And he's like a... What? Oh, do you... Okay, have you seen Gustav from Tensei? Yeah, I've oh, seen oh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, <laughs> Let me, let me, let me, let me, fi let me find the... Let me, let me find a picture for you. You're gonna have to put the pictures up on the when, when you're editing the video. Oh, yeah, of course. But uh, let me, let me show you the picture. What? So that's... Uh, okay, so they that, do look the same, but that's a, that's a dude. So, so yeah, so... Okay, so Gustav is like a... He's like an android. Yeah. So, so, okay, yeah, you can justify and say, like, okay, you remodeled himself and now he's the one. But it's like... To me, like Gust Gustav was one of the few Tensei designs that I thought was really cool. As is, uh, yeah, that's that's. I mean, that's completely unique. It really annoys me that they did a Rule sixty three on him. <laughs> I mean, even even separated from your opinions of the designs themselves, imagine you're a fan of the character, right? And it's like I know I know Tensei doesn't have any like hardcore fans in the fr in even in the Langrisser fan base, but I'm just saying. Zalone already has their original characters, okay? They, they got plenty of waifus. You didn't need to change this, right? Like, what, what benefit does this give the character? Oh, <laughs> no pets here. Uh, so anyway, that's just me ranting a bit about their redesigns. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't care that much, but in general, I've liked their redesigns for Tensei characters. Uh, but this time in particular, I really didn't like them very much. Okay, so let's actually talk about their kits. Okay, so okay, let's start by talking about Michelle. So, Michelle is a tanky AoE, Lancer, or Infantry unit. So, she is like an AoE-focused DPS. Michelle is all AoEs. Uh, I mean, she has single targets, but you're, you're playing her for any AoEs. So, okay. uh, she has attack and defense boost in her talent, as long as you have buffs. Like, you know, it's pretty, that's pretty easy to satisfy. Uh, and it's only 20% compared to Lewin's 30%, but she does have... Uh, damage taken minus 15% if she inflicts 
her talent debuff onto enemy targets, uh, and she's using her three C. Like her th- her three C has a passive that says like if you're if this character is attacked by a unit with the debuff from your talent, damage taken minus fifty percent. So it comes out that she's she should be pretty tanky, and she has good like tanky soldiers too. She has phalanx, uh, stone colossus are okay. Like like oh. she has heavy like her infantry choices are kind of like eh. She only has like heavy infantry, I think, and well, she has empress personal guard, which is actually a really nice choice if you need to defend yourself against magic. Uh, state guards are okay. Uh, but she doesn't have the Sand Sea mercenaries, which are pretty OP. So that is one uh, deficiency in her soldiers, I guess. Uh, but she is okay. fairly she's fairly tanky. You know, like twenty percent defense from talent, minus fifty percent uh, damage if you if you get her debuff on people, and her soldiers are twenty five percent HP and forty percent defense, which is obviously that's pretty tanky. So the basic idea of her is that she has a one C skill, uh, which uh, has a substitute so basically it creates a copy of herself on a uh on a block like two blocks away oh, from okay. her so yeah. after she uses it she can move two blocks and attack so she creates a copy of herself and then it's also a cold blood skill and this copy whenever she uses a line skill it will copy that line skill and also do it uh you cannot attack the same units twice in this way so you have so basically it's just a way for her to make her line skills bigger uh you can't uh. use it you can't use it to like hit people more than once like that would i guess they thought that would be too broken so uh, what you can do with this though is that michelle can actually use her copy to attack uh, while staying far away from the action herself because the copy is not a unit you are not giving your opponent a way to approach you via the copy her 3c does two uh dispels two buffs i believe it was uh so there's a fair number of buff dispellers and buff stealers in the game right now but they usually only do one or two so just having one of those units usually doesn't matter that much, but uh, the idea is that if you have enough of them in your box and you combine them, uh, they can be very, very annoying. Uh, so you add that to Michelle's talent, which basically says anytime she does damage, she will give a stacking debuff that makes them take more AoE damage. Oh, that's what that meant. Oh, okay. I was going to ask about that. Yeah, that. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so yeah, you can stack it and it can't be dispelled. So as long as you get rid of Rosen and Gospels and stuff, uh, then Michelle is basically making your AoE characters stronger and stronger as she does more AoEs. Uh, and then if you stack this three times on somebody, they'll actually blow up when they end their turn, uh, which does fix damage to one ring around them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, the stacking debuff makes her a pretty good candidate for being your first AoE that you throw in uh, to make the rest of your AoE attacks stronger. Uh, my only big issue with using her as such is that she doesn't have a heal block of any kind or anything that can disrupt healing. I think that's often something you want out of your first AoE. Uh, so Bernhardt Sword Dance or Acid Burns or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's really all there is to say about her, because like she's actually a very simple character. Line AoEs, uh, increase AoE damage taken. You know, she can make the line AoEs bigger with her copy. Uh, she can she can wear Apex Boots, like Apex Boots, so 4 move, plus 2 from her substitute move being a Cold Blood skill. And then, uh, line skills usually reach pretty far, so like, only having 6 move it actually isn't that, uh, isn't that big of a problem. Uh, so, you know, she's fine. She's like, I think she places like, okay on a lot of tier lists, but that's because like, there's nothing wrong with her. She's, she's like a pretty strong AoE, but there's nothing particularly special about her, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the weird thing is that they didn't they didn't give Michelle any sort of uh, tanking skill. I kind of assumed, like, I always thought that when they added Michelle to the game, she would be some kind of tank. Mm-hmm. That's that's really my impression of Michelle. She's fine, AoE character. Build her if you like her. If you like the waifu, that's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's talk about uh, Gustel here. She's the one with the gimmicks, uh, but she's not. I don't think she's particularly good. So. She is a mage. In general, she's a mage unit with some cooldown related gimmicks. She has all kinds of skills and effects that affect cooldowns in some ways. So uh, let me try to list them off. Uh, Her talent inflicts a debuff when she takes damage, uh, which increases a random cooldown by one on the enemy. So basically anytime you hit her, like you'll get a random cooldown plus one. Okay. So uh, her talent also makes it so that allies within a certain uh, distance of her will get cooldown minus one after they use a skill. Well, that's nice. That's pretty nice, yeah. Uh, she has a, she actually has a heal, which is also nice. Uh, it's a, it's a, I believe it's a, yeah, five times intelligence heal, which is pretty good. 
uh, and it also reduces all cooldowns by one. So pretty good. That's actually that's actually a really nice support skill. She has a two C attack that says like if they have a bunch of cooldowns, they'll deal more damage and stuff. Like I get that's kind of weird, but sure, why not? And uh, finally, her three C is an AOE that inflicts uh, a random cooldown plus one after they end their turn. So it's not like it's not like you AOE them and then they get all the cooldowns plus one. It's AOE and they get a debuff that says after they end their turn, they will get all school all skill cooldowns plus one. And this one only lasts one turn, but it can't be dispelled, so at least there's that. And then finally, after she uses that AOE, she will get a buff to herself that says uh, reduces her damage taken, and will make it so that clock cannot activate. So, mm -hmm. but that's the first thing everybody like focused on, right? Like, oh, yeah, it's, it's, like... it's a clock, it's a clock counter. Blah, blah, blah. But, yeah. but here's the thing, like, initial examination of Gustav will be like, okay, she she looks kind of interesting. She's got these things, and oh, clock is dead. Blah blah blah. Uh, before I get to the clock part, first, like, look at her talent. You have to take damage from an enemy attack to to give them cooldown plus one. Yeah. So, and it's a random skill. So, what this basically means is that you already took the hit. So, yeah. <laughs> who cares? <laughs> uh, but also, you can be dead. Yeah, I mean, you don't, you're not necessarily dead, but, like, even if they AoE you, right? Like, it's like, oh, I already took the AoE, so oh, yeah. whatever. It's like, uh, the cooldown reduction in an aura from her talent. Okay, that's nice. That's definitely nice. But, uh, explain to me how that's better than, like, say, Lucretia, who has that stupid puppet that gives people cooldown minus one. And while, oh, Lucretia, yeah. while Lucretia's doing all this other stuff that she also does. <laughs> <laughs> now, admittedly, it being an aura... That means it's actually really strong for PvE stuff, so I'll give it that. And if you're in a tank push situation, I think Gustav would shine a lot. Uh, like I said, like the three C, the random school uh, or the skill cooldowns plus one is a debuff that requires the enemy to end their turn first. So again, they get to fire off their skill if they're in range before they get the cooldown minus one or cooldown plus one. So you didn't actually prevent them from using a skill on you, as long as like if you're still in range, basically. And then finally, the the clock. Uh, prevention, right? Uh, first of yeah. all, first of all, Gustav actually has to be in range for to get this AOE off, right? And, and I'll talk about that in a second. But like the other thing is that like clock is really not that common anymore. Like people still use clock. Like people use clock. Don't get me wrong, but it's like a lot of times people do not play with the expectation that clock is going to happen. Like if you if you are playing with clock in like that's a fallback. Clock clock should be a fallback for your strategy most of the time. Like yeah. you, you don't play with the assumption you're gonna get clocks if you're like, or at least most high-ranking players don't do that. Like clock is nice when it happens, but you don't play with the assumption that clock is going to happen. So, not only does this not like stop you from getting hit with the first shot, which is the most important one, but it's, preventing clock really isn't that big a deal in my opinion. Like, mm -hmm. yes, we we can all remember that one annoying match we've had in the past where some guy clocked like five times and we're really mad about it. But it's like most matches are not like that. So it's the law of averages sort of thing, right? It's, yeah. Don't hyper focus on like that five percent of matches you've had <laughs> where clock gave you a really bad day. <laughs> that's that's really my problem with it in general. It's like e even then, like preventing clock might have been a nice effect. The how she inflicts it and when she gets to inflict it is so limited that it's like it's really not that useful. And a second ago, I mentioned how you have to actually get real stuff in range. Like look at her kit; she has no act again, she has no move again. Uh, she is a standard three move mage uh with no move boost uh she does have she does have range plus two uh from her 3c so that does help a little bit what is it like three move plus and assuming you have the passive up that's uh three range with the aoe plus two from the passive so eight block threat range not the worst but you know Cortez better better threat range lucretia better threat range uh and aside from that like looking at the rest of gustav's kit it's just like it's pretty straightforward mage stuff like you know it's like free strike lightning strike thunderstorm even her like unique attack skills just kind of like it's just kind of a gimmick like it it might be nice okay. i don't think gustav's terrible or anything but like it's, it's just like no uh, very few move boosts uh range is just like okay at best i think uh and the gimmicks she has just like you're really not gonna use them most of the time and like the one they do happen is just kind of like yeah i prevent the clock and I got I got hit I got hit with like three different AOEs, but at least I prevented clock because it's like whatever. Yeah. I can see it maybe being useful in certain tank push matchups. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, like, that's pretty much the only situation I feel like Gustav would be good. Uh, otherwise, she's not bad. Kind of a generic mage, when you think about it. Obviously, if your opponent lets you initiate on them with Gustav, uh, they are either, they're either, like, not really paying attention, like, they, they miscounted blocks, <laughs> or, uh, they had a very short light team, so you can reach them with Gustav easily. And they're just toying with you. As long maybe fiddling with extra, you know, future stuff. I mean, the fact that she has a deny, you know, uh, enchant ability at all shows that they are, you know, looking at that thing entirely. You know, it would be OP instead of deny pluck, deny breeze. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, someday we might get a deny breeze because they just opened, you know, the Pandora's box by how? denying I'll, I'll, pluck. But, but, I mean, just look at how restrictive they made it for Gustav, right? You have to mm -hmm. you have to be in range, you have to AoE, like, you have to fire off the skill, and then Gustav herself gets the uh, gets a buff on herself that makes it so that, like, clock cannot activate. I mean, I, maybe they'll add some kind of breeze counter in the future, but damn. Uh, I mean, otherwise, I, I, we didn't mention this very much, but she has, like, the, the OP faction trifecta. That's Dark, Mythical, and Tensei. <laughs> uh, that's the meme OP faction combo. The only thing that would make it more OP if, like, if she had a fourth faction and it was Empire or something. Uh, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna pass on this one. I will probably pass on Michelle on this. Neither one of them are bad, but I don't think anybody's gonna be, like, really want to be pulling this too especially with like Valkyra Chronicles two months after this right uh yeah well Iron Chancellor and uh console will be talking about it in a second they are way more worth pulling than these two I think <laughs> yep. uh, if, if they come with a guarantee better I'll pull them but that's about it yeah so let's move on to yet more uh OC Donut Steals from Zalone uh you know when they first added Old Landius, I was just like, "Yeah, that's pretty cool." Like they're they're like, they're like adding old characters and yeah, giving them more backstory and stuff. But I feel like it, it feels like they're just like running out of ideas at this point. Cause like, <laughs> so we got we got Iron Chancellor and Console of the Moon, who is old Florentia and old uh, Varash. So okay, Frontier, look at these two, right? So you got you got Iron Iron Chancellor and Console of the Moon, who are old Florentia and old Varash. Okay, so of these two, one of them, one of them is a normal human, and one of them is from an ageless being of aliens that come from the moon. Which one would you guess, just from looking at their designs? Like, who is the one that is the ageless being? <laughs> oh, Council of the Moon. No, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's like Florentia, Iron Chancellor. She looks exactly like Florentia, except she's angrier. <laughs> Okay, that's what you meant. Yeah, she she just looks like a slightly reskinned version of Florentia. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> whatever. That's just being nitpicky, but whatever. Uh, Iron Chancellor, old Florentia. Okay, so basically they they took a lot of the gameplay facets of Florentia, but instead of being a healing and act again bot, uh, she still has a lot of uh, support skills, but they uh, instead they made her a DPS. DPS focus player uh, unit. Okay. Her talent, first of all, damage damage plus thirty percent, so very strong. That's like thirty yeah. percent is like pretty pretty standard, like out of like the really strong DPS units. You know, Yulia's thirty uh, percent. Lucretia's thirty percent. Uh, ba basically, the only people who break thirty percent are Lana in her SP class and Varash when he's at like five percent HP. <laughs> so she's already very strong just from a damage standpoint. And then she has uh, end turn skills, just like the Nora Flancia, uh, but they're different this time. So one of them is an offensive one. You have to have three units in like a triangle formation, uh, okay. diagonal out from Iron Chancellor, uh, and she will give them a buff that gives Soldier Attack plus twenty five percent, and then the Florentia Movement Boost, which is uh, five minus base movement. So you know she can't boost calves uh, once again. Uh, so obviously just from looking at this, uh, it's nice from the move boost, obviously, but also soldier attack plus 25% means that this is purely a single target team boost, right? Yeah. Because, you know, obviously AOEs aren't going to get anything out of this except for the movement. Uh, and then the second one was, the second formation she has is a defensive one. Uh, you have to have three units in a line, and then she will restore 70% of a soldier HP, and then give... 
uh, some defense to the soldiers. Uh, it also gives immunity to displacement on those units. Uh, so this is obviously more designed towards tank pushing, which can work pretty well because I think in that situation, Iron Chancellor herself will act as the tank buster, probably. But I think the offensive one is the one that I think most people are looking at here because she she is a pretty aggressive unit. So I would say that one is going to be the more, more use most of the time. Even though like the the formation for it sounds kind of weird because like it's like okay why would I like why would I have units in like a triangle formation like yeah that's, but that's uh, weird thing. it's not it it it's kind of weird to have it happen in the middle of a match but obviously it works just fine for rush because you can place units however you want at the start of a map you know just place your units how you need them to in the nine blocks at the start and then have Florentia boost the ones you want them want her to for okay. Iron Chancellor but. Yeah, so that's... I see, I see that happening. Okay, yeah. Or like, but anyway, Florentia that's, has... Yeah. That's, that's how I've seen, like, her being used a lot of times. It's just like, okay, just just use her to boost turn one. Like The other thing is that uh, these stratagems are on a turn cooldown. Two turn cooldown at six stars, so she just uses a standard cooldown for these skills instead of having a point system, like the original Florentia. Okay, she's so learned. That, so, so, that's, so that's another... That's actually another reason why she's probably more popular with rush teams, because, uh, you know... You don't want to sit around waiting, waiting around for the cooldown to end. Uh, Florentia, the more turns you wait, like the like the more she saves up, then she's gonna be stronger and stronger. Assuming she had a faction buff, uh, uh, Iron Chancellor doesn't need a faction buff, so that's that's good. Okay. That's the main gimmick here. Is like she's, uh, she's like Florentia in that she uses the nerf skill at the end of her turn. It's just that they're different this time, and they're more. Uh, I feel like they're more, or at least the offensive one is more aggressive. I feel like the one that heals soldier HP in a line. Like, okay, that might be kind of useful in a tank push because you're going to be huddled around your tank and it's probably not that hard to get a three units in a line. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's still that's still kind of nice. But the rest of our kit is, like, like very single target focused. And like I said, she is... Her boosts are obviously more focused on single target. And uh, she has a lot of really strong single target attacks. So first she has a, an act again because everybody has an act again now. Uh, well, not 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 like a not like a taking our turn act again, but rather the cold blood style skill. So uh, when she uses it, it's a one C. She uses it, she gets a command that's kind of similar to the Landia Sara. Uh, and then she, after using it, she can move three blocks and attack. So three blocks instead of two, so pretty strong. Uh, well, well, she has a number of two C attacks, but her strongest two C attack is uh, one that ignores enemy defense and magic defense thirty percent if she has the offensive buff from her talent. So. It's pretty strong. And then, of course, she has her 3C, which is just really crazy. So uh, it is basically Sword Soul, again, because they, they keep giving Sword Soul to everybody. But instead of doing... So instead of doing Heal Block, like L1, or uh, Curse of Wounding, like uh, Wet Ham, or Damage Dealt, like Lewin. Uh, Lewin's being the worst one here. <laughs> yeah. uh, so she does a unique debuff called Collapse, which reduces Soldier Healing by 80%. So let's... Oh, this well, is. I, I thought that was regular. Okay, soldier healing. Okay, so so the thing about this is that you might look at it and think like th this just seems like a worse sword soul, and I do not agree with that at all because this is actually better than both. Mm -hmm. This is actually better than both sword soul and even in some cases better than wet hams super single target skill. For one reason, there is not a single accessory that can that can prevent this. Uh, you know, blood pack prevents the block. What was what was the name of the stupid? heal reversal accessory <laughs> i can't remember uh, oh yeah that one <laughs> the, the, the one everybody puts on betty or the one that everyone puts in betty teams to annoy you but anyway like oh, heart, heart of gaia that's what it was heart of gaia <laughs> heart of gaia like there's like there's no there's no accessory to stop this if you don't have gospel if you don't have rosen and, and even gospel can't stop this because she she uh dispels five buffs like if you, if you get unlucky you'll, you'll get it anyway uh so yeah i mean like you cannot prevent this unless you have rosen or you are lucky enough to keep your immunity buff from gospel uh okay. and sure like sure you can still heal but it, soldier healing minus 80 percent is pretty devastating to most tanks like most tanks if you get hit by this and you die and like you revive or whatever and okay you, you heal back a little bit and it, even if you take a turn like take a bit to heal your tank soldier healing minus 80 percent like you're, you're getting like you're only gonna have like two or three soldiers left and it's pretty easy to follow up with another dps to finish him off most of the time anyway yeah. Even though the debuff is kind of weird, uh, I think it is just as good, if not better, than Sword Soul. So she will only do the five buff dispel if she's in offense from her talent, uh, yeah. which is going to be most of the time. Because, like I said, I think most people play Iron Chancellor 
with like an ag aggressive single target team in mind. If you have to, if you have the defense buff, uh, buff from her talent, instead she can move three blocks and then she'll get give some buffs. To, like I, I don't think it's really that useful. I think it's more yeah. Yeah, I think it's I think it's more straightforward to just use Iron Chancellor and rush teams. Like I mean, I mean, I can think of some pick ban situations where you might end up with a more defensive team and you might use her more defensively, but most of the time she's gonna be offensive. Mm -hmm. uh, aside from that, Iron Chancellor has mass attack. Always nice to have, like, uh, makes her, like, again, makes her nice as, like, a team enabler. And remember, since uh, her offense skill from her talent is an additional skill, on turn one, you can do mass attack, and they immediately boost the movement. So uh, you don't have to take two turns setting up your uh, your team. Mm -hmm. uh, but she also has uh, Consecration, too, which, you know, could possibly be a mid a kind of tiny healer. Uh, I would never use Consecration because you're going to be using her move and act against skill most of the time. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I can see, like, maybe using the act against skill plus Consecration and then her 3C, like, maybe, like, once in a while. Uh, I can see that happening. But, yeah, I don't like Consecration. It's so RNG. Like, it's... I don't like it. <laughs> uh, all her... Uh, all her attack skills are two range, which is uh, another nice thing. So... Uh, three base move plus three from act again and then two threat range so uh, eight threat range uh, and then like usually she's gonna be breezed from her own talent right yeah. so that's another two so ten range uh, yeah overall I just feel like uh, good team support uh, good enabler really strong single target damage so and of course like she has uh, really good factions uh, Empire of course is just really strong right now Empire is just really OP uh, yeah. Legend always good. I guess Strategic Masters is like, eh, like it's not that great. But like Str Strategic Masters need a bit of a buff, so sure. Like, but mm -hmm. although like if you're trying to buff Strategic Masters, it doesn't help very much if you also put the unit in the same, like also in like two of the most OP factions there are. Uh, whatever, it's it, it's an option. The thing is like almost everybody who's running Ultimate is not running like some kind of Strategic Strategic Masters box. They are running an Empire box, and they just happen to have Ultimate in there. <laughs> Yeah. That's, that's, that's usually how it is so mm -hmm. in that case they, it's just nice to also have both these factions because you know you're gonna have more options mm -hmm. okay uh so next we got console of the moon okay so virage was always considered kind of a niche character so they've letting him get his revenge here uh, also like a lot of people felt like it was a waste of jun fukuyama's voice uh, so like oh the guy who voices Virash is the guy who voices Lelouch from from uh, Code Geass. Code Geass, okay. Yeah, yeah. So like a lot of people thought it was like such a waste of him because nobody uses Virash or like very few people use Virash, except yeah. in in like Auto Arena. Uh, <laughs> anyway, Cosmo the Moon. Uh, once again, he's an aquatic unit, uh, but he's a little bit different this time. When he's in water, he gets all stats plus twenty five percent at six stars. So instead of reviving like six times or whatever that Virash can do. Uh, he is instead now a very aggressive unit that has an act again. So to trigger his act again, you have to uh, get some kind of displacement effect. Oh, I see. Okay. So obviously, like any act again character is usually really strong. Uh, although, like it comes down to how easy can you activate the act again effect, right? And uh, yeah, that's not too big of a problem for uh, Console of the Moon. Although, of course, uh, the first thing you need to remember. Gotta ban Hilda. You know, Hilda stops your uh, displacements and you're gonna be sad. Uh, although, like, that's not really that big a deal because honestly, Console of the Moon, single target character, uh, banning Hilda is never, like, a bad thing for single target teams, I feel like, because <laughs> Hilda is such a pain in the ass. So, because of his talent re requiring uh, displacements to activate his act again, he obviously his kit has all kinds of crazy displacements in it. Uh, okay, so first of all, he has a 1C that's like a revive. So he still has a revive, but it's a 1C this time. And it's like, it's it's a pretty standard like revive passive instead, uh, except that it will restore 60% HP if he's inside water. He doesn't have like a, a ton of like water abilities. He doesn't have like surfs up or like yeah. some kind of crazy accessory that gives him water, yet. at least not yet. Uh, so right now he only has Tidal Surge to rely on. So he is going to be using Tidal Surge for his, for his, like, his 2C skill almost all the time. You really shouldn't be going without that. And not like that's a bad thing anyway, because it's move 2 and act against or whatever. Uh, and 1C, probably going to be the revive most of the time. You know, nothing much to say there. Uh, so 
So aside from that, like a lot of the other skills he has in his kit are pretty much irrelevant because you're going to be using these two most of the time. I mean, obviously the rest of the kit is mostly for when you're leveling up or you're newer to the game and you're using them in PvE or whatever. Uh, so the focus here should be on his 3C. Uh, his 3C is one of the skills that changes back and forth between two skills. So basically, it's it's chain hook. It cha it's a chain hook and then it turns oh, okay. it, it, and it's basically chain hook and then it turns into an attack. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. You, you, he has three move or four because he can use apex boots. Aquatic units can use apex boots. Uh, plus two for tidal surge, and then he can have a three range chain hook. So this is not as far as the standard chain hook, but you know whatever. Uh, it's like four plus two plus three is already pretty good range. Uh, and you know you're probably getting chatting with breeze because you always do. Uh, so. Obviously, you pull the target next to Virash or uh, Console of the Moon, and then this will turn into a single target skill, and of course he acts again, and then he'll probably just kill them. So, uh, essentially, he can act similar to an assassin, because you just pull a guy away from the tank, kill them, and his job is done. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's gonna, I think it's going to be pretty hard to survive him, because you know he has 25% increased stats from his talent, uh, he 1.5 times damage and then damage plus 40% if he's in water from 3C. Pretty self explanatory. So, a couple of limitations here. Uh, obviously, like I said, Hilda, always annoying. Uh, there is that one helm that, like, prevents the. It's a it's the, the, the caster helm that uh, makes it so that you can't get displaced and the person next to you can't get displaced. I think it was like, I think it was like the electric helmet or something. Yeah, that's just kind of weird. So it's that was basically Sage's hat, except for like displacement effects, right? So mm -hmm. if if some guy decided, I, I mean, I, I don't think most people are going to be using that, but you know, once in a while you might run into someone using one of those, and it's it's going to make you sad. <laughs> yeah. uh, although, like, you'll know if you're using it, right? It's not like one. Of, it's not one of those things where it surprises you, because you know it it puts on a buff, so you, you'll be able to see it. Uh, so just make sure not to target that unit with console if you're doing that <laughs> so i don't think there's a lot to say here i think he console the moon like even though he has like some gimmicks to how he does it it's pretty straightforward pull a weak unit kill them and he's done his job and of course he can revive so he has some longevity and he's an aquatic unit so he's fairly tanky all stats plus 25 percent, and he's in water decently tanky uh his soldiers are like you know he does have pirates if you want to make him even more tanky if you really want to uh, he has Lizard Man, which of course standard DPS uh, soldier for uh, aquatics, and of course he has the new aquatic soldier, which we'll talk about later. But it is very strong. Yeah, uh, I don't damage. I don't think is a problem for him. Yeah. Uh, factions pretty good. Legend, mythical, uh, strategic masters again like strategic needs a buff, so whatever. Uh, legend yeah. always always has legend. Uh, legend always has uh, Landius buffing them, uh, and you know legend boxes work pretty well with sage of the trees so if you have both of those in your boxes obviously console of the moon fits into her pretty well as well yeah there right we're all like iron chancellor console of the moon both uh i would say you're both very good uh, any thoughts on console here uh i like him i he's, i think he's is the um i think he's an upgrade to Frosh. <laughs> I don't even know if I would say he's an upgrade because he, he does something totally different, right? Vross is designed more as like a general annoyance unit. Okay. I'll probably have to say my, my tickets though, when, when we're to come around. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I, I feel like these two characters, they were trying to buff the Strategic Masters faction. Uh, because obviously they're both in the Strategic Masters faction. But uh, like I said, they, they put them in factions that didn't need help as well. Also... One of the biggest problems with the, uh, the strat faction is their buffers. Even a strat focus box. Uh, it's going to be crossed over with Empire like 80-90% of the time, right? Mm -hmm. In general, I don't think most people play like single faction boxes. Except maybe Empire because Empire is OP. Like Empire, Empire is like really, yeah. really strong right now. Uh, okay, so yeah, that is the uh, five new characters. That was a lot we talked about. Coming up to a new SP hero that came out with... Uh, with uh, Michelle and Gustav, and this this one is like it's the one everybody joked about. It's the one so many people are waiting for. It's SPD Heart. 
<laughs> D-Hard D has finally D -Hard? He has finally gotten his SP class. I, 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 think a, I think a lot of people knew that it would happen eventually because he's the main character. Uh, a lot of people wanted to be better. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, SP D-Hard is pretty much just D-Hard. SP D-Hard, uh, calf class, once again. His stats are, like, almost identical to his calf class originally. Like, his... Uh, uh, his attack went up by like, was it like four points? Like it was, it was like it's like barely a change. But okay, so the big change here is of course his talent. Uh, instead of crit rate plus thirty percent at six stars, it is crit rate and crit damage plus twenty five percent. So, okay, right off the bat, they fixed out one of the biggest problems that people have with D Hard, which is that he can't kill anything. Uh, oh, because he has damage isn't there. Yeah, no damage. So like, eh, I mean, this helps a little bit, but it's like it's actually not as good as. I think almost everybody would have preferred if he got crit rate plus attack or crit rate plus just damage. Uh, even if it was even if it wasn't like twenty five percent, even if it was twenty percent instead of twenty five percent, I think most people like people would have been okay with attack or damage. Uh, although damage, I guess, is a little bit OP. But like, I mean, I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit later when I talk about like uh, D Heart's crit rate, I guess. But so the other part of this talent is it's like they were trying to make a joke out of it. So D Hart now gets all these effects from being around women, which okay, yeah, that's funny. Uh, but the question is, is that actually useful? Uh, so at six stars, he will take twenty percent less damage as long as he is within three blocks of a female unit. The nice thing here is that it does work for both allies and enemies. Uh, so what that means is most of the time, that means D Hart will actually take less damage from female units all the time, unless you're sniping him from four blocks away. And of course, if there is already a female unit near him, he will take less damage from everything. Uh, so it's a little bit restrictive, but it is a nice bonus. Uh, and this sort of makes sense with the last part of his talent, which says that if he kills an enemy, he can move two blocks. Uh, obviously, this is meant to sort of replace the fact that uh, before his SP, you were probably going to use move again on him to get away from the enemy sometimes. Uh, now he just gets to move again if you kill something. Uh, and of course, this works with his 3C, which automatically activates any on-kill effects in case you fail kills with the heart. Uh, but of course, if he's moving two blocks away from whatever he attacked, if that was a female unit and he fails to kill her, then that means he'll move away two blocks and he'll still be within three blocks of that unit. Uh, so all of these things actually do make sense together. Uh, it's just that when you compare it to someone like SP Sherry, she got minus 20% damage taken as long as you're attacking her. And there really wasn't any sort of gimmick attached to it. Uh, although D Hearts is all damage taken minus 20%, so that means uh, this does work on like AoEs and stuff. Okay, but let's look at his skills. Okay. I, so I his, like his skilled name. Okay, so first he has a 1C skill, which is uh, basically what this is, is a two-person faction buff between D-Hard and a selected female ally. So once again, giving up chat skills. But in this case, I think this is a bigger problem because limiting it so that D-Hard can only buff a female ally kind of sucks. D-Hard himself is already a faction buff, right? Like yeah. one of the reasons that like one of the reasons people want a buff to D Heart is to make the origin faction better. Yeah. And something like this feels like really, really redundant. But even if you're in a situation where it's like, okay, you know, I have I've drafted a team in Pick Band where I have three or two or three of them or even four of them, or actually just two or three of them actually, <laughs> that are getting a faction buff from one of the units, but like there's one odd person out. Oh, okay, D Heart, I can get D Heart, and D Heart will buff them. And you're like, okay, that's nice. But it kind of sucks that it's only female units, because like, <laughs> I mean, I I, I think that's self-explanatory. And then after that, uh, D Hard also gets damage dealt plus fifteen percent, uh, and uh, when D Hard ignores guard, ignore class effects, and all okay. these last and all these last four turns. So, uh, the the uh, the faction buff effect g goes to both D Hard and the female ally. Uh, the damage dealt plus fifteen percent and the ignore gar uh, ignore hero type uh is uh only goes to dr okay and then finally there's like an effect here where it's like if it's a female origins unit they will both get like another buff that restores hp if one of them dies so like i okay, guess like it's, it's just a bonus it's like it's not that big a deal it's, it's just nice one, to have two, but whatever three, four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen something <laughs> choices you have there I was, I was counting all the female origin of light characters. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, so uh, a couple interesting things about this skill. The damage dealt plus 15%. Uh, 
That seems nice because, okay, a lot of people think like, okay, d Heart can't do damage, so damage up plus 30% is nice. But the thing is, remember, usually you are using this instead of move again. So your damage actually didn't increase by as much as you might think it did, because usually, originally he would use damage dealt plus 10% from move again. Uh, but instead he has 15% damage from this self buff now. And the other thing is that this is a generic damage buff. It is not like some kind of unique damage buff. So you can't even, you can't stack this with like Miracle or anything like that. Which kind of sucks. Uh, for the, okay, so the hero ignore guard, ignore class effects. Okay, this is really interesting. Okay, so first, like, obvi okay, obviously like because he's a cav, like so there's going to be some situations where it's like, I really want to kill a Lancer. So, you know, it's, it's nice to get this. Interesting thing about this, uh, this only applies to the hero. I don't know if they've, they've patched it since then, but this effect only applies to the hero. So, what this means is that if oh. D if D Heart is bringing like the Elven Cavalry Archers or whatever, uh, and you are attacking a flyer, the Archers are still going to do effective damage, but D Heart will do neutral damage. Okay, well, it's a very strange effect because, and I don't know how much it even matters. Uh, but basically, this means the skill doesn't remove D Heart's ability to kill flyers effectively if you decide to bring Archer Soldiers. Uh, it does take away D Heart's advantage against infantries. I will say that since this is generally a pretty useful skill, it's not like you get to choose whether or not you get the classic Nor effect when you use this skill. Although it's worth keeping in mind that I believe this also makes it so that his Archer Soldiers still suffer from the effects of an enemy wearing Star Earring. Or if he's using fairies, it means the opponent could wear uh, True Cross, and I believe they will get the bonus there as well. Uh, only for the soldiers, of course, but basically this adds a lot of very convoluted math for when you want to calculate how much damage D-Heart is actually doing. I want to say that generally it is a good effect. If you really need D-Heart to kill an infantry, you probably would just not bring this skill. That is very weird. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know if it actually matters in any of the matchups that are relevant in the meta but it's just like one of something to think about and i and i don't even know if this is a bug or something that they patched out later i don't think it is like i don't i don't believe like they patched it out or later mm -hmm. uh so yeah like that's the 1c skill i mean it is like i said it's nice to have uh it, it is only a 1c so you know if you only need to buff one person it's obviously friendlier to his kit than bringing the faction buff uh the 2c is is completely pointless it, it's uh it's just a single target attack it has increased crit rate and then like if there's a female ally for every single female ally the cool the skill cooldown is reduced by one uh some people have said like this might be really strong in pve sometimes because if you have a bunch of female characters and then like the heart can just use it every single turn so like okay sure in pve maybe it'll be okay but yeah in pvp like even if i'm playing against a tankless team and i don't need d hard to guard pierce there is, I can't think of any reason to be using this over thousand hooves for the guy. Yeah, thousand hooves is much stronger. Okay, so the new soldier he got. So this is funny because like the new soldier he got was actually uh, Earth Elf Knight, the goblins. So at first, uh, oh yeah, yeah I, I didn't mention this. I, I don't think I mentioned this yet, but his his uh, his SP class, even though it's cavalry, it is terrain master movement. So it's like the Wataru collab robots. Um, he himself is terrain master, but he'll be affected by his troops, right? Yeah. So if you're using flyer troops, then yeah, he's gonna he, he can run over everything. But if you're using cav troops, then he's still gonna walk like a cav, which so which which is really annoying compared to like you know like Sherry got terrain master in her talent, Narm got terrain master in her talent, and for some reason they got D hard. They're like, oh, he doesn't deserve it. Nope. Uh, anyway, they gave him Earth Elf Knights because it's like okay, it's another two range option for him, and it's the only one that. At the time, it was the only one that had infantry move, right? So, when you look at his uh, two range soldiers, because he still has a problem, he himself is one range, but then he has assassin skills or a two range, and then he wants a two range soldier to do the assassin skill with him. And it's like, okay, so his, his choices were, uh, what is it, Demon Hunter and Elven Cavalry Archer, both of which use calf movement, so which is has always been a big problem with D Heart. Like, he, he has terrible movement on all those mountains and forests and stuff. So they gave him Earth Elf Knight. Uh, Earth Elf Knights have infantry movement, so at least he can move on to like forests without any penalties. He can move through, I think, it was swamp without any without any penalties. Uh, so yeah, like when, so when when he first came out, people were like, like, 
yeah he's he's like he kind of sucks like because <laughs> like he's st he still has the same problem he always had but luckily for him the patch right after which is the which of course is the uh he got released with michelle gustav and then right after uh that's the iron chancellor and console of the moon patch he got the fairy soldiers now this of course is a big change for uh d -Hard because the fairy soldiers are a flying troop that have five move and are touring so not only does he get to have full control over his terrain master movement while using his assassin set uh, still keep his five move uh, these also do magic damage there's not that many assassins that have magic damage troops so that gives at least gives d heart another thing that's unique to him okay now the question is can d heart actually kill stuff like that's the big that's the big problem right because that was always his biggest problem. Like he had okay, he had okay move. Uh, he was kind of bothered by terrain a bit, uh, and he had like a faction buff, which is a nice bonus to have. So he still has all those things, and they fixed a couple problems with them. They gave him more damage. They uh, made him a little bit more maneuverable. They gave him better uh, five move, two range unit, uh, two range soldiers. Okay. So now the question is, like, okay, he has some extra stuff, but can he still kill stuff, or can he kill stuff? Uh. Yeah, kind of. So, so the problem is, is like when you when you look at a lot of the half assassins or like sort of assassins, like Sherry, right? Sherry, Sherry has really high attack. Uh, Sherry, I mean, Earth Elf Knights are kind of bad because they have no damage boost and they like, they're like they have no damage boost, they have no attack boost, so they they've always been kind of weak. So like Sherry actually fails to kill a lot of things sometimes uh, if they're tanky enough. But Sherry, of course, has one really big weapon on her side, which of course is the Ragnarok. Ragnarok breaks Sorks, breaks all kinds of 100% effects, and like just ruins a lot of defensive like bonuses. Uh, D-Hart does not have that. D-Hart does not have Backstab. He does not have Ragnarok. He is a Cav unit, so he is using Lances and Swords. So he's going to be using, yeah, pretty much Frost right most of the time, but like, or, or like or like Seal Guardian, some kind of attack, attack sword, right? Some people test it around with it, like, okay, he's like, he, his kill power is like, okay, he can kill a lot of the meta units, and it really depends on what accessory you run on him, right? So, a lot of people say, like, run Twilight Storm on him. Maybe, uh, you know, you can, you can use Twilight Storm, or you can use, like, you know, whatever, whatever attack accessory you want. Uh, but if you want to break 100% life effects with the heart, you need to run Twilight Storm, which is a problem, because, of course, there are some mages that have... That have the uh, glory of the world helm uh and they also use sorks so the fairy soldiers are actually a detriment for him in that case because sorks have a ton of magic defense and they won't be able to survive uh the fairy attacks so uh d hearts i think d heart still has a lot of problems killing stuff uh he can kill a lot he can't kill a lot of units now like i mean he does it he definitely does a better job at killing a lot of like especially like lewin i think he can i think he can kill lewin uh it really depends okay uh mages are like i think mages i think like the tests were varied like it was hit or miss and of course the big problem another big problem here is that he's still crit reliant okay crit reliant assassins have some problems though because of course hilda prevents crits entirely uh landius and christiana are around they will give crit him a hard time with crits and the thing is is that d heart doesn't even have access to crit evasion reduction anymore which is something that some assassins are relying on now because if you hit 100 crit uh you know I've, I've talked about this before but you can have 100 crit but it'll, yeah. you'll still get crit evasion subtracts from that so you will have less than 100 crit and they try like some assassins deal with that now by running like faceless soldiers which increase decrease the enemy's crit evade uh, Epsilon's faction buff decreases the enemy's crit evade, uh, and then there's like some other effects I think that decrease crit evade. But D Hard, I don't want to say he doesn't have access. He does have faceless soldiers, but nobody's gonna use faceless on his <laughs> on his like on his cap class because why would you do that? D Hard runs into a problem once again where he might miss the crit and you will be mad. Uh, he does have so his crit rate is actually lower than his original Royal Knight class because he lost five percent crit from his talent uh, he did get 10 skill from the new class so that's a four percent crit difference i believe if you stack his crit like the crit stones uh, if, you, if you stack crit stones you get an okay crit roll on your accessory 
uh, you give him some skill bonuses in his in his like mastery stones. I believe it should be. I believe it should be possible to get 100% crit on D Heart. Although like you, you might need some good really, really good rolls to achieve that. Okay. Uh, or you can use like I guess if you really want to, you can use like something weird like violent dash. But I think most of the time you're still gonna be most of the time you're gonna be using strike on D Heart still because strike is you know, obvious use for that. But like I said. Even if you hit 100% crit with crit D heart, he doesn't have any crit evasion reduction, which so uh, you're still rolling that dice a lot of the time. Uh, and uh, the other thing, I, I think they were like scared of making D heart too powerful because he is a faction buffer. He does have some like single target potential sometimes, so they didn't want like they didn't want to make him too strong because then he'd be like a super diverse like a DPS unit that can also faction buff, and they, I guess they want to avoid that. Although, like, they already have plenty of those. <laughs> uh, another problem is, like, D-Heart's place as a faction buffer, right? So, his kit isn't as bad as Sigma's, where it's, like, if you run the faction buff on Sigma, he cannot use his SP skills at all. Or, at least, he can't use, like, his dual set at all. Like, he has, yeah. to, he has to use, like, faction buff plus a strong wind cycle or whatever. Uh, for D-Heart, because his SP skills really didn't change that much, you can probably still run his original faction buff set, which is probably faction buff, strike, and then calamity. You lose out on some damage, but you know you get it from you get it from the faction buff, so that's not so bad. But obviously, the big problem right now is that origin kind of sucks. And uh, to be fair, that's not a problem with D heart, right? Like that's not. I think if they continue buffing origins, like like right now, like right now, the newest characters we know that are about to come out in China are like uh, Azusa and Oboro. Those are two new origin characters. Uh, hopefully, they'll keep adding origin characters because uh, I think that's why they were scared to buff D Heart too much because they want to do a thing where it's like he's a viable faction buffer, and then later they're gonna add origin characters, and then once they add enough strong origin characters, then D Heart will be more worth using. Uh, even as is, I think like he's he's not he's not like yeah. he's not even as is he's not like terrible or anything like he's 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 okay like he's just not. Nobody's gonna go out of their way to build build D Heart, okay? If you, but if you already have a six star D Heart like me, and you're sad that you never use him, then yeah, I think it's worth SPing him. I think he'll get some use. Okay. But uh, yeah, I think right now like SP D Heart, it's it's an improvement, and I think he's very like, but he's like he's just like usable in PvP right now. There's like no particular reason to go out of your way to use him, but I think it was a lot of that has to do with his alone being too scared to buff him to a ridiculous degree because he is a faction buffer. And usually with faction buffers, I think they're a little bit more hesitant to give them too many buffs. Although they gave Epsilon that ridiculous exclusive and they gave him the zombie soldier, so I don't know. I don't know what they're oh, doing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. Anyway, that's SPD Heart. It's an improvement. Uh, anything you want to say about SPD Heart? Uh, no, except I'm probably not going to get him for a while because I'm poor on the challenge points things. <laughs> yeah, that's that's always a big problem, right? Like the challenge points. Yeah, we talked a while about all this, a lot, a lot, a lot of new stuff, but uh, I guess yes. now we can talk about the exclusive. So, Michelle Gustav patch, they added King of the Red Moon and Otto Quattos exclusive. So, King of the Red Moon's exclusive is, it's it's just a very, like, general, all-around increase to all the things he does. It's not one of those weird exclusive where they give him some crazy new effect. They just made him better all around. So, fixed damage dealt, that's just, like, standard part of his kit. Uh, he gets healed more. Uh, he heal. Uh, he, you know, he has some stuff that heals himself. So like, yeah, that's nice. Uh, and then command range of Dark Side of the Moon. It's like, okay, it's. I don't know how. I mean, that's that's nice. The command range was uh, two blocks, I think. So it's three blocks now. I mean, two blocks is pretty limiting. So three blocks is nice. But uh, I don't think this isn't going to convince anybody to use King of the Red Moon if they weren't already using him. I think. It just makes him stronger. And to be fair, like, I think King of the Red Moon was already a pretty good unit. He's not seen very often, but it's like, if you play AoEs, like, I think he's pretty good. I, but I don't have, I don't have a lot to say about it. Like, uh, Autocrado. So Autocrado is like, uh, you know, it's, uh, when he does damage, he steals one buff. So that's nice. Like, you know, he does a lot of AoEs. Uh, and then he gets stat increases if he, whenever he inflicts taunts on enemies. The thing about that is that the buff steal is nice, like like I said earlier, buff steal is nice and buff dispels are nice when you can have a lot of units that do it, and then it's just like, it annoys your opponent because you're just taking all these buffs away from them. 
But the stat boost here is... It's just a nice bonus, but I don't like it very much because you Auto Crowdle actually has to have engaged and hit something to get the stat increase. Uh, uh, Auto Crowdle doesn't have like terrible range because he uses a line skill. Like his 3C is a line skill which reaches pretty far, so it's not so his range isn't as bad as a lot of other infantries. But uh, I do I don't really like that they made it so that he it's a stat increase for getting time like whatever. <laughs> uh, and the other thing about this is that. In the same patch cycle, they released the Tiamat's armor, which I, which we'll talk about later. <laughs> and that armor is totally busted, uh, and that so it's going to be like hard to choose between that and this. Uh, I think most okay. people are still going to be. Ch I think a lot of people are still going to choose the exclusive uh, because you know uh, you usually don't go into matches expecting Aqua to survive like magic stuff, but yeah, it's it's, it's a pretty hard choice though. Okay. So in the uh, the Iron Chancellor and Console of the Moon patch, they added Suzette and Moose uh, exclusives. Uh, Suzette's the weapon. So Suzette's is uh, another good example of stuff the character should have had to begin with. Suzette gets the glory faction. Uh, everybody was like, why is Suzette in glory? And they're like, it's almost like they designed this exclusive ahead of time and it just didn't, they just waited a long time to release it just to piss everyone off. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, like she gets her glory faction. And she can target the ground now, uh, which is something... Again, that's something she should have been able to do to begin with. But <laughs> whatever, you, they gave her like these things, and it's like, whatever. It's, it's an improvement to Suzette. Uh, it's not going to convince anybody to use Suzette if they weren't already using her, I think. But <laughs> it's, 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 it's what a lot of Suzette players want, I've heard again. Uh, Moose... Yeah, Moose exclusive, like... I think this is... I think this thing is terrible. Like, I don't know what they're going I, for here. Yeah, I looked at it, I was like, what... What is this? So, so okay, so basically this has the same effect as like her 1C power of longevity skill, right? But the thing yeah. is, is like most of that, most of that people didn't bring it because like the other, the other skill was better, the power of, I forgot what it was, like the one that increases her range. Uh, making grasslands around her isn't, doesn't have to be a bad thing, but the thing that, that annoys me about this is that one, it lasts one turn, so that sucks. <laughs> Two, she has to finish. Her, she has to end her turn to get this. So she's wasting her entire first turn. Just like if you were you, if you were trying to use this for some kind of effect, you have to wait your entire first turn with Boo just to get this effect. So it's just like, what's the point of this? Like, basically, they just shoved the power of longevity skill into this exclusive, and it's like, why would you do that? Nobody cared about that skill. Yeah. Also, the like, third turn cooldown on that thing too. It's like, Tenio's headdress, guys. <laughs> <laughs> You would think that by now they learn, because they they shown in the past already that they know that Tenyo's headdress is OP, and they or or even Glory the World or whatever, right? And they they released all kinds of exclusives as helms that are just like really good, or had a or at least have some kind of niche reason for you to use them. Like you know, like obviously like Licorice's helm was very overpowered. Uh, you know, there's a couple other ones that were like really that were like good, but not necessarily better than Tenyo's headdress, but at least like. Uh, arguable in whether or not you use them. I can see nobody using Moo who would want this over uh, Tenyo's headdress. But maybe maybe I'm missing something here. Like if somebody sees something about this or do you think that like it's OP then maybe but I just don't see anything about this that is worth it. And nah. uh, other thing is that like now like you can't control it either, right? Like you you don't get to decide when to use this. Mm -hmm. It's just like at the end of your first turn you're gonna get some wrestlands. It's like okay. If <laughs> If you could strategically decide when this effect would take place, like that would be a little bit more useful. Because like, okay, maybe like some, maybe some, maybe like a juggler jumped into you and you want to like, okay, I'm, I'm putting you in grass now. It's like, at least that's something. Uh, I feel like this is just like one of the worst exclusives they had in a long time. I I like the design. It's pretty, but that that's <laughs> yes. all it has. Yes, look at the pretty picture. Look at the, the pretty picture. Guys. Look at the pretty picture. <laughs> uh okay so yeah not a lot to say so uh, i guess we could talk about the new soldiers so new soldiers uh two new soldiers from these two patches each uh, michelle gustav patch added giant zombies and gold knights and the uh iron chancellor patch added fairy prophets and glacier elementals so uh giant zombie uh everybody knows that this troop is stupidly op troop that uh epsilon wants every everybody's playing epsilon right now is waiting for these troops to come out 
So in general, these are just really good troops, like uh, HP, attack, critical hit rate, like they're just really strong. But of course they have the typical demon weakness, right? But of course, Epsilon doesn't care about any of that. Epsilon has his exclusives, so Epsilon just turns these guys from pretty good already to just really OP, because they do not even have the downside of being demons. Uh, and of course, uh, being that they are demon soldiers, they have the standard 40% stat boost that uh, demon soldiers typically get. So, yeah. Uh, just a lot of attack, crit rate. For everybody else that gets these, Shalinka, they're okay on her, like, if you, if you still use Shalinka. Vargas, it's good as another offensive troop for him. Uh, Listel, here's the thing about the zombies, they actually have terrain master movement for some reason. <laughs> I guess they're like float or something, but... So, so Listel, Listel using these gets to keep her flying movement, uh, or essentially flying, or like, turn, no, like floating movement, rather. And, uh, and... Like, she's a double demon unit then, so she can't get Twilight Sword anymore. So if you still use Listel and you care about uh, not getting Twilight Sword, then yeah, these are like an improvement over Undead Knights, because Undead Knights, uh, even though Undead Knights had the uh, higher move than these, uh, they were cab units, so that was a problem. Uh, these do not have that problem. So, uh, Otto Crotto, like might use these once in a while. If, if you aren't facing any kind of holy units and you want them to do more damage than they're okay on Alcro. And I guess I I guess it's worth mentioning Yusuke. Like Yusuke's soldier choices are actually really terrible. <laughs> and they've never they kept like not releasing soldiers for Yusuke for some reason. Like but Yusuke finally got these. So like, like okay finally I, I can use something other than Zealots. Because Zealots kinda suck. Heavy infantry are like they're very like eh in terms of damage like 30% attack. These are really strong. Uh Yusuke finally gets like a full offensive choice. Obviously, the downside is that they're demons, and you know, I don't think I need to say anything about that. Uh, yeah. Overall, like Giant Zombie, really strong troop. Uh, all, all the Epsilon users are waiting for this one. Uh, so the other one that came out with Michelle and Gustav was Gold Knight. So Gold Knight is a, uh, I think, a pretty self-explanatory. They are a very good general use cavalry soldier for any cavalry hero. Uh, attack and defense bonus 30%, and this is uh, this is dual phase. It is not only attack. Uh, it is not only on offense. So they pretty much completely replaced dragoons. I feel like for a lot of units, yeah. Elwin, uh, Landius, maybe like uh, Leon, uh, maybe Leon anyway. Like Le Leon really likes the mechanical knights because like they let him move over terrain. Uh, they're like Rosalia is not going to use these because Rosalia she really sticks to her whole class. Uh, Togro might use these. If you still use Togoro, uh, Warner is not going to use these because Warner, Warner likes his mechanics. So, basically anybody you run as a Cav is one of these characters, these are a very, very good choice. Elwyn especially, like, I think Elwyn is probably the biggest thing here. Uh, because Elwyn didn't have that good of an offensive physical cavalry troop. Uh, like I said, Dragoons were a choice, but these are pretty much all around better. Than dragoons, I would say, because they have their attack and defense all the time instead of only when attacking. Uh, and you have that 100% like damage taken bonus. I mean, it's a, that's just something that's nice to have. It's not, it's a, uh, you're not gonna have it most of the time, but it is nice for, I guess, Landius. Uh, I don't know how useful it is because 100% HP threshold is like really hard to maintain, obviously. And uh, you can run Bracer to maintain it, but most tanks don't even run Bracer anymore because like Blood Pact is so important nowadays. And or or even Overlord yeah. Bat, or even Overlord Bat, right? Overlord Bat mm -hmm. to prevent Moby Down. But even if you don't maintain a damage taken, a lot of times like when I play Landius, I want him to be able to do a lot of damage still. So if you run Cav Landius, then definitely these troops are great because they have good attack, and they will have attack plus three percent all the time, uh, and. Landius does not have any other, like, calf troop choices that, like, do that much damage. Uh, you know, royal calves are, you know, they just have the damage, the physical damage reduction. That's all they have. So, yeah, like, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty good choice. Like, if you still play Elwyn, uh, I would definitely raise these. Okay. Uh, Landius is a maybe because, like, I think, like, I think the people who still play Landius might be switching him over to Lancer again uh, for a number of reasons, but Especially because of Tiamat's armor, which we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But if you use Cav Landius, then sure. Other than that, Leon likes Mech Knights. Werner likes Mech Knights. Uh, Rosalia is not going to run her Calf class. Please don't do that. 
uh, uh, Togro maybe if you're one of the people that actually has Togro built. But, yeah. So yeah, like with most of the other year four troops, like this, these are really good, but uh, the dis distribution is kind of limited. Okay. okay, so with the Iron Chancellor patch, fairies and glacier elementals. So fairies, like uh, our, we already talked about these a little bit when we were talking about SPD Hard. So D Hard got these, but uh, these are of course a mage troop. So a bunch of mages got these. And uh, finally, they've added a troop that kind of challenges Sorceress as the best offense troop. So they have higher base attack than Sorceresses. They have a lower attack bonus, 30% instead of 45%. But they also have damage dealt plus 15%. So depending on the target, I think these will be out damaging Sorceresses. And I think like some people ran the numbers for the majority of cases, I think these will be out damaging Sorceresses. So, uh, yeah, these are pretty much a must build uh, because, I mean, unless you just don't use any of these units, I guess, but I think that's unlikely. You know, uh, Light of Genesis is on here, and I think a lot of people use Light of Genesis. So that's the obvious one. Lana is on here. Lana will like these. Hein, okay, so I mentioned this in the past, but like Hein, like if you don't have SP Hein, you do not have Sorceresses on him. So if you are struggling with some PvE stuff and you like using Hein, this is actually really nice for him as for his base form. There's so many other units that got this, you know, like, okay, Rachel, they're not popular in PvP anymore, but it's still just a nice bonus that they got these, like, Rachel, Gerald, and Layla, uh, Young Jessica, Noemi, like, these are all units that don't see play as much in PvP anymore, but it's not that, this, it's nice that they got these, they luckily didn't give to Lucretia, because I guess they realized that Lucretia is way too OP already. Obviously, the, the one big downside here is that they do not have the defensive or magic defensive value that Sorceresses have, and that's the big... That's actually the big difference, I would say. But the flexibility in not needing to maintain 100% life is pretty huge. Yeah. In general, if you are going to use a, a, a mage troop, these are straight better than sorceresses, like 90% of the time. Mm -hmm. Pretty much a must build, I think. So finally, there's the Glacier Elementals. So these are these troops that were pretty much specifically designed for uh, Console of the Moon. Uh, I talked about them briefly when we were talking about Console of the Moon. So basically, these are they are actually two ranged soldiers. And they deal magic damage, huh. but if you're in water, they ignore melee penalty. So, so they're kind of similar to pirates in that they ignore melee penalty if you're in water. Uh, but instead of being like a mixed attack and tankiness uh, troop like pirate raiders, uh, these instead are just like full into attack. They have a bunch of forty percent attack, I believe, and uh, they also inflict the debuff or something like that. But essentially, these are a magic choice when you don't want to use lizard men or whatever. Where that ship anal can get them. Yeah, I mean, Shelfanil, like, for, for some reason, like, they gave her a bunch of, like, water troops. Uh, she, I, she can use, like, I think she can use, like, Tide Masters, and uh, I think she can use uh, Tidal Elves or something. So, yeah, the, I, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, they just randomly give these to people sometimes. Okay, so Juggler, I would actually say, like, these are actually really good on Juggler, in my opinion. If you still use Juggler, it's likely you're a more offensive-oriented play. So, if you use, uh... If you use Aquatic Juggler, like a lot of people switch to Cap Juggler now, but like if you if you use Aquatic Juggler still, uh, these are obviously really nice. You don't have to use like Werewolves, which can be a, a problem sometimes, or like Gargoyles, which just kind of suck. Uh, if you want an offensive troop, these are really strong. And of course Juggler puts himself in water, so it's not a problem. Uh, obviously to put all these Aquatic units here, you know, Alfred, Lucia, like if you want an offensive troop, then obviously these are nice. They're, they're okay for Hie. Uh, although, like, I don't see Hie that much anymore. Yeah, I don't either. Throw, throwing him a bone, I guess. So next is, uh, okay, so during the uh, Michelle Gustav pump, they had a equipment banner. So four new pieces of equipment were, were added. And, oh boy, these were, uh, well, aside from one of them, I would say most of them are pretty good. So let's start with the weapon. It is a hammer. Mm -hmm. So this hammer is uh, attack plus 10%, and then when you are attacking something in single target, you will disable their armor effects. And uh, if in, if it's in PvE, uh, and you're attacking an NPC or whatever, it'll do defense minus 50% instead. Uh, I think the use of this is fairly obvious. Uh, it finally makes it so that those annoying shield armors are not uh, annoying the crap out of you when you are trying to win using single target units. Obviously, this is a debuff, so it is still stopped by Rosen. It's stopped by Gospel, so you can't just like you know it doesn't completely solve your problem. But you know, at least at least that's something under your control, right? You you have to you ban Gospels or whatever. 
It also smashes last rites, which is a big deal. The only thing is that, of course, this is a hammer, right? So hammers are for infantry, holy, and aquatic, I believe. When you think of relevant units from those classes, obviously, like, Console of the Moon is the shiny new unit that would use this. Yeah. Uh, Rosalia can use this. Like, Rosalia, I think Rosalia is pretty good with this. Like, Rosalia had a, her unique was a weapon, but it, kinda, it was kind of like, eh. Uh, Mario might use this. Mario's exclusive was also a weapon, uh, but her exclusive, it gave her like a little bit more flexibility with her heal, which was kind of important. But if you care only about Mario's ability to kill stuff, then this is like a really good hammer. Uh, Yusuke can use this, but no, like not that many people use Yusuke. Ryo, like I would use, obviously I would use this on Ryo because those forbidden armor activations piss me off. So like, <laughs> good on Ryo. Uh, Wataru, I'll use it like what. It's really nice for Wataru because one of Wataru's biggest problems is killing uh, units that use last rites because he has no damage boost. Uh, but yeah, like th even though this is a really strong weapon, it is limited by the fact that it's a hammer. Uh, so there's a lot of obviously there's like a lot of calves and flyers and stuff they can't use this. So the fact that it's a hammer is what limits it. I would say. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the body armor. Okay, this is the big one. This is the Tiamat's uh, armor. So this thing is is ridiculous uh so hp magic defense plus five percent if the unit is a mixed force then tw magic damage taken reduced by 20 percent. so basically this is a guaranteed forbidden defender armor activation against any magic attack as long as you're a mixed force which is okay so which is pretty ridiculous so you know it's been tested this works for the entire unit just like one of those shields does and this works on aoe's this is a pretty like all-around nerf essentially to mages i guess they figured like everybody was using light of genesis and lucretia and kaiura that they were just like okay we gotta add something that, that that hurts them so they added this thing uh pretty crazy uh really nice for all the heavy armor wearers because they're usually scared of magic damage yeah uh like it's gonna be way harder to kill them now like, especially like especially for kaiura right like kaiura when you think of a, a lot of the uh, heavy armor units, a lot of times they run infantry soldiers out front because they have a bunch of damage reduction in their techs. Uh, you put this on top, like, yeah, it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be kind of tough for uh, Kyrie to get through them. It depends on a unit, obviously, but I, I think it's like the best armor for the majority of heavy armor wearers. It's kind of funny because like a bunch of people have been wasting all their scrolls like powering up their forbidden defender armors, right? But now it's yeah. like now I, I, it's luckily I haven't gotten a full one, so I can't really do that. What I will say about that is like forbidden defender armor will still be good because it also guards against physical damage. Uh, but this one has no RNG. Of course, the big thing is that remember, unless you're a mega whale, it's not like you're gonna get a bunch of these all at once, right? So whatever nice forbidden defender armor you have right now, like you're probably still gonna get a lot of use out of it before you get even one of these. Uh, but yeah, like this is a pretty busted armor. Like I like I would say like you're gonna be putting out on most of your heavy armor wearers if you can if you can get if you can get it basically. Uh, okay, so next is the helm. It's a heavy helm called League Helm. Uh, this is this is the dud pull of the banner. This thing is stupid. <laughs> it's uh it's. Yeah, it says, uh, when Guardian Ally, counter damage plus 15%. So, <sighs> counter damage plus 15% might be nice for some of the tanks, like, you know, like... But my problem with it is that it's HP plus 10%. So, the tanks that I think of immediately, like Emilia or Leiden, they want conversion. So, it's like, yeah, the damage is nice, but it's like, you're kind of, you're, miss you're missing out on the defense and magic defense, or, or magic defense, so it's just like... Eh, like, you, you, I mean, I would say, like, damage is more important to them than getting more defensive magic defense if you wanted a huge counter. Because, uh, obviously, Leiden and Emilia don't have, like, damage when you're countering, which is usually one of the big locations. Uh, so I would say, like, if you're looking for big counters, this is always nice. And if you, obviously, if you do screen enchant and you stack HP, then HP plus 10% is not a big deal. I would not use this on Hilda, probably. Like, it would be okay on... Uh, Christian, and for for Landius, I would actually say this is good, but that's about it. Like I would I would put on I would put on Landius and maybe Leiden or or Emilia if I really wanted to, uh, but for the most part, the fact that it's HP plus ten percent with counterattack damage, I don't like that. 
Okay, so out of out of the four items that came out of this banner, like guess which one I keep getting on my Chinese account? Like guess which one they put into the common pool? That's how it works. That's how it happens. Always. It all works. Yeah. So like yeah. So it's it's this it's it's this stupid helmet. Right? Okay. So anyway, not much to say. Like it, it's not like totally useless. Like some of the other items they added in the past, but like yeah, it's definitely the the duck pool here. So finally, they added a, an accessory, a bloodthirsty nail. Uh, you know, it's it's holy ring except it's attack instead of. It's his holy ring, but attack for, for it really took him four years, or three. Yeah, you know, not the greatest thing because like you know, there's a lot of really strong accessories, but you know, it's it's it's, it's nice. Overall, like it's a pretty good equipment banner, but as always, equipment banners are for whales. Uh, pull at your own risk. <laughs> also, like I guess I'll mention this right now, like sort of relevance. But uh, this new equip banner came out during the Michelle Gustav month. But then the month after, during the Iron Chancellor and Florentia patch, yeah. they had a banner which was actually a custom equipment banner. So it was kind of similar to the hero banner that we had during the anniversary, where you get to choose okay. where you get to choose what's what, what's on raid up. Yeah, you get to choose four, or you have to choose four actually. You have to choose one for each slot. So you don't get to like focus on just one piece of equipment. You have to choose one for each slot, and you can't choose like four. Oh, okay. You can't choose four accessories. You have to choose one from the different slots. Oh, okay. What so, you got? which isn't that bad because like I think most people will do something like uh, Night Bloom for a step for a weapon. Uh, probably yeah. like probably like Last Rites or something for the armor if you still need them, and the helm probably like Tanio's headdress or whatever or Tears helm and and the accessory like you know like Swordsmith medal as always. Uh, this new equipment banner will not be included on the custom banner. Uh, just, okay, I figured it's that. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think that's unexpected, but I, I just feel the need to put that out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. But anyway, that's the that's the uh, new equipment we got, plus, like, a custom equipment banner that's upcoming a, a month later. Uh, any thoughts here? Cool. I mean, I don't have a, um, a forbidden... Uh, armor thing, so the team that or the other one it, to me is whatever I get one first is when I want to start working. Really, you, you don't have a single forbidden defender's armor yet. Damn. I spend all of my ore in the shop, and I still don't. Have it. Uh, I'm just unlucky. R.I.P. in peace. Yes, I I think I have like two of them right now. Yeah, they're, they're, I don't. I have none. They're pretty rare, yeah. Uh, I do like the, the, the Moon Smasher hammer. I'll probably use that if I get it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it is a very good weapon, but it's limited by the fact that it's a hammer, and you have to have a hammer user to use it, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for me, of course, obviously I would love to have this thing on Rio just so I can stop being angry at Hilda as I activate Forbidden Defender Armor over and over. Uh, yep. Although, by the time this comes out, I think a lot of people, Mega Whales will be switching over to Tiamat Armor just so they can defend themselves against magic. Anyway, yeah, that's the new equipment. Ah. Uh, all right, we're, we're, I, I can hear you getting a bit tired there. But okay, yes. but before we, we're, we're almost to the end here. Okay, so let's talk about the stuff they added to the Farmville mode. So the floating city. Okay, so in the Michelle and Gustav banner, uh, they added automated mine, weapon forge, fertile soil, and snack bar. Uh, I'll explain in a second. Uh, so in the uh, Iron Chancellor and Council of the Moon patch, they added a post office and a cloud bathhouse. Okay, so starting with starting with the uh, Michelle Gustav banner. So it's four new themes. Two of them are like resource creators for the two new buildings. Okay, so even more resources. It doesn't. It's not as much as it sounds like. So basically, the automated mine, uh, you get to mine one of four ores. You get to queue them. Uh, so uh, as you upgrade it, you can queue more ores like in a row so that you can leave it alone longer without you needing to go back and queue them. Uh, in my experience, you're going to get plenty of those ores, so you don't need to worry too much about it. And most of you are going to still going to be busy upgrading a lot of your buildings. You can start mining for the ore, but you're going to be busy upgrading your slot machine and stuff still, a lot of you. So don't worry too much about it. Uh, the soil is used to plant vegetables. So the vegetables, uh, seeds come from the Sissy White shop or whatever in the Farmville mode. They increase the max level on it, so you have to upgrade it again to get the seeds. As you might expect, you use the new ore in the Weapon Forge, and you use the vegetables in the snack bar. Uh, it, would, okay. would be, it would be pretty weird if it was the other way around. Okay, Weapon Forge. Uh, I think this is the one a lot of people are wondering about. So, Weapon Forge, so you have to use the new ores. You use two of the new ores plus one of the farmable resources, which is like, uh, what is it, Lumber, Limestone, or Limonite. So, it varies based on which weapon type you're building. 
So for example, swords, if you want to forge a sword, you have to use uh, two of the four boards. I forgot which colors. I don't have it off the top of my head, but I, as I recall, it uses limonite for, as a resource. And it's different for each weapon, right? So in the weapon forge, since there's seven, there's uh, seven weapon types in the game, right? So you get to choose which weapon you want to make, which type of weapon you want to make. So that's actually really nice. It's not just like, make me a weapon and then you just like make whatever. You actually get to choose the type. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so you can you can actually choose to just make swords all the time, but like you're gonna be limited a little bit because the pro- daggers. The price will continuously increase as you forge more weapons of the same type uh, ah. throughout the month. It gets reset at the end of the month. So that's basically it. I mean, even though you theoretically can forge the same weapon over and over, obviously you're gonna run out of resources of that type, and uh, the, it gets more and more expensive. So you're basically encouraged to make weapons of all kinds eventually uh i mean you don't have to but you know you're encouraged to um i mean you're you're going to make at least three types right because you have three different resources you have limonite limestone and lumber and you're gonna make you're you're probably gonna at least like make one of you focus on one of each type each month like i said the the amount of resources it takes goes up each time and i believe by the i forgot it was the fourth or fifth forge I'll, i'll put it in the video obviously but like it was either a fourth or fifth forge it will start costing mana as well. So that that can be a problem because mana is also used in the snack bar, which I'll talk about in a second. So if you focus fire too much on the same weapon type over and over, you're going to run out of mana and you won't be able to make make any snacks. Uh, which, uh, which, you know, some people will do that. Like, some people won't care about the snacks. So for me so far, I have forged... Uh, I forgot the exact number, but like right now, uh, I've actually written it down. But I have about a twenty percent rate of it giving me an SSR. Um, oh, okay. So like, so it's not an insignificant rate of good drops for me. Obviously, like the fact that you can focus a specific weapon type it helps a lot. Uh, if there's a specific weapon you're, that you're still missing, like you can try to focus fire on that, like hoping you get it. Uh, for me, so far, I believe I've made about, uh, I think I forced about eighty times, and I've gotten about fifteen SSR weapons. Uh, out of those, the good ones were I got a crystal dagger once, okay, and, and I got a Ragnarok once. So, it, so this this does give the good items. Like don't like it, it's not like one of those stingy modes where it just gives you stupid Nighthawk over and over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, like the Weapon Forge, definitely a nice addition. Like uh, yeah, uh, basically I'm happy about it. Yeah, you basically need to decide between if you want to use your mana forging weapons over and over or if you want to save your mana to make snack uh salads at the snack bar so okay so now i'll talk about the snack bar so you can make four different salads in this in this building uh they are made from vegetables which i you know like i mentioned you need to upgrade the sissy white shop and you'll get seeds and you can plant the seeds in the soil uh that that was also a new building and then you know you'll uh, and then you like combine vegetables to make salad. Very simple. Uh, and then you, it also costs mana each time to make the salads because I guess I, I don't know. Like I guess they need mana. Salads are magical. They, they, they need they need mana to make salads in this world, I guess. But so four different salads. One of them restores uh, twenty five stamina. Uh, th- by the way, there's like a salad limit per month as well. Like I believe this twenty five stamina uh, salad is like I think you can make sixty a month, which is a lot. So like. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, so uh, there's one that lets you. So there's a one that lets you sweep map events. Uh, so obviously you would build this one if you're lazy or if you're getting annoyed at map events and just want to be able to sweep them. Uh, yeah. I don't really like this one for the simple fact that like I think it's too pricey for the fact that you don't you have to consume one to sweep a map event. So basically, you don't get to use them all the time. Like, it's nice if you're like really busy a particular day and you, it's nice to have some around if you need to sweep map events. So whatever. Uh, the th- there's third one is, uh, increases drops from s- secret realm events. So like this thing would increase the drops you get from one run of a stage. I think it was. Oh, the uh, goblin thing. Not, not goblins, not, not like, not gold, but secret realm events. Back to eatery. Far- or Ar- yeah. Yeah. Epic eatery, like f- farming. Oh. Things, right. Oh, so you- okay. Each time you use one, you'll get like I think it was double the drops or something. Oh, that's still pretty good on a seventy, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how good it is. Like I, I haven't bothered making any of them because basically all it does is save you stamina when you think about it. Mm-hmm. And it's a, and at that point, it's like, how is this different from just me making a stamina salad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was, whatever. I guess they, I guess they were really looking for ideas here. 
But anyway, the final salad is, it's another salad. It's another like stamina salad. I think this one instead of restores, I think this one is restores 50 instead. I don't remember exactly. But what it also does is that it increases uh, all your unit stats by 5% for the rest of the day in PVE moments. I, I think it will be nice for people who are struggling with uh, some of the challenges. Yeah, that's uh, what I was like, thinking Yeah, too. so like if you if you want to like make, if you feel like, oh, I like, I just needed a little bit more stats to beat this challenge. Like this, mm -hmm. I think this will be a really nice solid. Uh, you only get to make four of these each month, which I think is like more than enough. Like you basically save these for like when you really want to like tackle yeah, a challenge. Yeah, you really need them. You want to tackle a challenge and then you use one of these salads. Like, you know, it gives you a bit, bit of a boost, makes the challenge a bit easier. Yeah. yeah, so it's a, I, I think it's like nice. So overall, like the salads, I think in general, uh, the most valuable ones are going to be the stamina ones. And the map event sweep one is the one that's nice for convenience. I would make a couple of those and just like keep them around in case you're really busy any particular day and don't want to play. Yeah, or, you're, or it's like the, the day's about to reset and you're like, ah, dang, I need to use it on a, a map event. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now, I think a lot of players, day one players anyway, are actually finishing up a lot of their Aniki farming. Uh, that are starting to feel like stamina is not as valuable anymore, you will not find the snack or the salads as appealing as maybe just using your mana to build more weapons. So in that case, I think you will be building more weapons. So that's really all there is to it. Uh, so yeah, those are the buildings that were added in the Michelle Gustav batch. So free stuff. We always like free stuff. All right, so uh, the new buildings they added in uh, the Iron Chancellor patch are the post office and the Cloud Bathhouse. The post office is fluff. They basically added like some quests to the, the Farmville mode, which involves like clicking around and like talking oh. to people. And the post office just has like some pretty pictures in it, basically. Like you know, that's it's it's fluff. Uh, so the other new building, you need to complete a huge quest. Well, not a huge, but like a quest line in the in the Farmville mode to unlock it, and that involves the post office. So I guess th they just decided they needed to do this. But anyway, uh, the bathhouse is great. Uh, it increases your account's max stamina. Ooh, dang. So, like, uh, I believe it starts at... I forgot, I forgot, like, if it starts at 6, plus 6 or plus 5. But, like, I'll, I'll put it in a video. I forgot it was plus 6 or plus 5. But anyway, like, it maxes out at plus 30, right? So instead of 120 stamina max now, we have 150. That's that's nice. Yeah, it's it's nice because uh, 120 stamina was uh, 10 hours to max. And 150 would be 12.5 uh, hours instead. Uh, it's not maybe it's not a huge change to some people, but like for me, like I, I feel like 12.5 hours is much nicer like number to work with. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it really depends on your schedule, right? But anyway, like max stamina. I, I hope they upgrade this building even more in the future. Like I, I kind of want more than that. I would like max stamina to be like 200 or something. But uh, you know, it's it's nice that they added this at all. So definitely a very nice building. So if you don't have anything else, uh, I guess we can. F just about finish this up and talk about some of the content and like minor adjustments they made. So first, uh, Michelle Gustav patch. Like I said, they added more main story. Huh. Uh, so yeah, that's nice. Uh, so they ran roguelike mode again. So I, you know, people like that mode. So yay! Mm. Yeah. But anyway, like, uh, and then in the uh, Iron Chancellor patch, they ran flipping battleground the sixth time. Uh, the sixth time. We're on. What five now? Yeah, the, the the one the one oh the one that's running right now on global is yeah, five. Yeah. Ah. Aside from that, uh, some other adjustments they made. Uh, they they actually nerfed the covenant slightly. Don't get too worried because like it it was like a very minor nerf. So basically, what they did is that they made it so that Thor can only stack to forty stacks of raging thunder. They made it so that Frigg can only stack to fifty stacks of divine feather, and like, they actually made her ember stronger. In Heimdall, they also like. They also gave a max to his stacks. So basically, they, they capped the stacks you could get from Thor, Frigg, or Heimdall. Okay. Uh, but, like, the caps are, like, pretty high. Like, they're higher than like most people will get to in normal play. Yeah, like, I, I would I, I'd get, like, 12. So basically, the reason they did this is because some people were doing, like, super super cheese strats where they just, like, did, like they specifically went to, like, build stacks, like, in a crazy mm -hmm, fashion. Yeah. And then it ended up, and then, like, Thor was able to chop off like 70% of a like a challenge boss's life or something uh yeah that's that's probably why they did it so they just don't want people to do that anymore mm -hmm. uh, yeah for most people if you're playing like quote unquote normally like this this max stack thing is not gonna affect you at all so eh, yeah whatever <laughs> uh 
Uh, more importantly, I quality of life changed in the iron. I believe it was the iron chancellor patch. I can't remember. Uh, but anyway, they added a multi sweep option for gate of fates. Uh, there, there's like a gate of fate like uh, history now, like where where, it, where where there's like another tab where it shows like what are the units that you recently swept. And then like you go on to them and then there's like a checklist of oh which which stages do you want to sweep yeah it just makes gate of fate much faster now you don't have to go to every uh, single i'll post a picture in the in the you want to do it with a nine individual little click yeah 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 it's a long awaited quality life change for game okay okay ah, and well, i think we are okay. finally done today like that is all we have Two i mean hours and 30 minutes yeah, we talked a really long time today. Yes, uh, we did. Well, I'm gonna chop this down. Hopefully, it won't be as long when I make the video. Yeah. But yeah, uh, you know, yeah. Thanks for joining me again, Frontier. No uh, problem. I'm gonna go sleep. <laughs> thanks for everyone for watching. Uh, you know, yes, thank you. you know, I guess we kind of like. Sorry if it felt like we were rushing a little bit towards the end here. Uh, you know, yeah. we're, we're feeling a little bit tired. But next time it's gonna. Next time it's gonna be Valkyria Chronicles. I think that's gonna be really interesting to talk about. All right. Yes. See you guys. Bye.